I got this terrible panic because indeed I was going to cease to exist. You got to kill your ego and actually appreciate life. He who must save his life must first lose it. The psychological death because indeed Richard Alpert was dying. Ego death offers a new perspective that promises a better life and has sent me to an existential crisis. And we're not referring to the word that we commonly use to describe someone who with a high sense of self. As described by psychologist Sigmund Freud, ego is, quote, a portion of the human personality which is experienced as the self or I and is in contact with the external world through perception. Thus, anyone that refers to themselves as me or I has an ego, a sense of oneself. Therefore, the removal of someone's ego requires for the identity of oneself to be erased. And this is exactly what we see. We're just like Richard Alpert is a gown I wear. You know, it's an identity that I've taken on. I wasn't born Richard Alpert. I was just born as a human being. Is it removes all this nonsense narrative in your head. You're willing to let go. So you start to have this dissociative experience. You lose your sense of self in temples of fragmentation in a form of electronic Buddhism. You become, become the world's best striker unless you're also the world's biggest egoist. All compared to the acceptance of your ego and your self-importance. Now this is separated into two parts with the first one being about ego death and our second one is gonna be egoism. We're only going to focus on ego death, its principles and philosophies. So which one should you do? Should you have an ego or should you kill your ego? Hello, I'm Illusory and I offer you perspectives. Starting with ego death, we are called to quote unquote, game end our ego. It sees ego to be an anchor to this reality, limiting your experience in this world. These ideas derive from early shamanic and Buddhist teachings, primarily Buddhism, who has transcended the idea of ego being an enemy, sprouting from ancient China to the backyards of Californian suburbs. Buddhism traveled for very long. Ago. Have you heard of Buddhism? Okay. Just keep on walking, bro. Don't do nothing stupid. In Buddhism, the very nature of reality is suffering. But ego death doesn't aim to escape suffering, but rather it seeks the truth of reality. There is no self, it is merely an illusory. So, in that case, what is you and what is me? What are we? To ego death, we are simply one. All that you see, that wall, the screen, you, all of it is one. All of us is connected to the universe in some way or another. The ideas of us being one found in ego death have been primarily thought to have been derived from psychedelics and their usage and consequences over the years. But this isn't true at all, since traditionally this is a very hippie-like idea. Stop stereotyping. Leave me alone. But this isn't true at all, as the ideas that ego death proclaims are found in many ancient and modern ideologies. In Taoism, we are introduced to the philosophy of the lack of ego. We are told how ego is a limited structure and just a byproduct of the socialization process. From birth, you socialize, and as you socialize, you develop an ego. For Taoism, ego is just a fabrication that limits the individual. And once this individual overcomes the ego, you will find your true self, which is the real you that is hidden under the ego and lives naturally with the world around him or her and it has been thought to have been the way to commit effortless action, other known as Wu Wei. I mispronounced many of these terms, and they're just going to be replaced with a Stephen Hawking voiceover. Wu Wei. The commitment of effortless action. And we see more characteristics of ego death in Taoism, as in the Tao teaching, which is basically kind of the Bible for Taoism, Taoism. saying, quote, The sage puts herself last, yet comes out ahead. She dies to her ego. Yet, she finds life. Lao Tzu, 400 BC. Finding the true self can only be done through spiritual practices and eradication of the ego, ego death. As ego only divides through the self-separation from the various differences that you see around you and the people around you. By identifying with the social status, a race, a profession, you differentiate yourself from the people around you thus creating an identity and simultaneously dividing the world around you. And division creates violence. So in Taoism, Taoism, ego is a virus that we must get rid of. Even in ancient times, ego death was present. 
but in a different form, of course. Our modern version of it consists of psychedelics and meditation. As when ingesting these psychedelics, people have reported to have witnessed and experienced ego death, to lose the feeling of one's identity. They are no longer identifying with the person who they are. They don't feel like a person anymore, but rather a whole. But despite all this, what does ego death actually do to a person? People proclaim that having lack of ego will incite you to have a lot of confrontation because in order to defeat an ego opposing you, you must have an ego yourself. And we do see a reflection of this in modern psychology. As weakness of ego is characterized by impulsive or immediate behavior, a sense of inferiority, and excessive vulnerability. Without the ego, we become mentally ill, according to psychologists. To understand why they proclaim this, we must look at back at Sigmund Freud's model for the human psyche. Consisting of three parts, we have the id, the ego, and the superego. The id is like the child in your mind. All he wants is instant gratification, and you, the ego, the person watching this video, is in charge of that child. You monitor him, and you make sure that he's in line, and he is not being a little silly, because the id just wants to be a little silly. The superego delivers you morality, and tells you that you shouldn't steal masapanes from the gas station. They're so yummy. And you, the ego, serve as the balance between the id and the superego, making sure that you balance both morality and desires. Alright, so we're at the part where my camera decided to die, so we're back. So through ego death, having no sense of self would mean an imbalance in your psyche. But is this actually true? A study conducted by PubMed Central revealed after analyzing over 20,000 respondents, with 13% of those respondents being lifetime psychedelic users, and the rest varying from moderate to no psychedelic usage, showed, quote, We did not find usage of psychedelics to be an independent risk factor for mental health problems. Since ego death can't be accomplished for a long period of time, for months, for years, there isn't really any studies, nor I don't really believe there would be any studies from in the future regarding ego death and its long-term effects. But we do know what happens to people who are exposed to ego death for slivers of time. And as backed up by PubMed Central, the same individuals that conducted the last study, they conducted a study where they analyzed and compared psychedelics to other substances. Those substances being snow and funny water and saw which ones led to the feelings of the eradication of the ego, the ego death. These are the list of the questions that they decided to ask the participants, but psychedelics were the one who takes the crown when it comes to feelings of the eradication of the ego. And as we saw previously, there isn't no evident evidence for psychedelics being a prone causer of mental health illnesses or mental instability. But how could this be true? How can someone be healthy with such a low ego? There is still a sense of self even after experiencing ego death, but this sense of self is very low compared to what it was originally. So this must mean that ego death provides a healthy balance for the human psyche despite the low level of ego. But that doesn't seem right. Each individual experiences ego death a certain way, but despite the differences in experience, they all point to the same conclusion. Is that we are not separate from each other, there's no separation, that we are all one. And this is exactly what philosopher Stace Walter noted in his book Philosophy and Mysticism. As difficult and vague these experiences are to understand, they all point to unity. Despite everybody having different backgrounds and perspectives to life, they still underwent through the same process, yet had the same conclusion. Who is it that's aware that I'm thinking? And suddenly I was thrown into this expansive, amazing feeling of freedom. You could ask a hundred people, what does money mean to you? and they will tell you a different answer each time. But when you have a hundred people go through ego death, I was everything and everyone. The same infinite, eternal, vibrant consciousness. You become That's what you behold, and it's like nothing you can imagine. 
they all come to the same conclusion that we are all united. I was no longer a fragment of the universe, I was the universe. Meaning that there must be an underlying truth that points towards that feeling of unity. Or perhaps the real truth is, is that we are unity. Is all one? The person across the street, is he me? Are we I? Thank you for watching. Now just click over here for the second part. If it's not out yet, well, you just have to wait a little. Subscribe.